learning experience was in my seventh grade science class. And we would constantly discuss the most strange, absurd questions. And we never really followed a structure. It was always like, what question does a student have today? This year in English class, we got assigned with this profile project. And the goal of the project was to find someone that we had no affiliation with. So it couldn't be related to Castilea or family or friend and interview them and find out basically their life story and write a five-page paper on it, make a video or a podcast or a photo essay about them. My history class this year is really focused on like how different cultures and countries interact. The most important thing, at least for me and from what I've heard from others, um, when it comes to learning is that you have to have an engagement with the way of learning. Well, I think to me it really depends on the class because I feel like there's some classes, for example, English, that are very open-ended and they open room for discussion, but at the same time I feel like classes such as math, it really depends on like like testing and it, there's, no, there's not really room for creativity, it's just whether you know the subject or not. I think definitely the way that the class is structured is based on what the class is. So English classes have a lot of opportunity for discussion and student-led opportunities, but then AP classes are in classes where you're learning to take a test. Going outside of your comfort zone and how you can learn by sort of expanding what you're already used to and through that you can grow. So Charlotte's example of getting out in the community and talking to someone you never talked to or having a time limit on an art project. So I think just experiencing something new, even though you may not be totally comfortable with it at first, is a common thread throughout all the comments. Okay. Uh, well, the thing about a test is that it really puts someone as a number rather than just uh, their entire background. So I feel that with uh, creative learning by maybe basing uh, the school system around projects and a lot of um, work, individual and in groups, uh, having maybe setting some sort of goal that's very vague. An hour block period once a week. Um, where kids, it's a mandatory period, but kids can do what they will. Um, for example, I would take advantage of this, finding like-minded friends in a more open environment that's not structured by a class or a teacher dictating what we do, and just discuss what we want to discuss, and I would take full advantage of something along those lines. So I think, personally, the best solution, because I consider myself like a capable human being, but not the best test taker, would be to find a more creative way and engaging way to show students understanding of a course that's not a standard test. Okay. But I think that having an AP definitely makes you a more competitive applicant. So not having an AP, you can be against it, but you're still going to be at a disadvantage compared to everybody else who's taking the APs. So I think that this is a little bit radical, but maybe eliminating APs altogether <laughs> would kind of even this out. But then again, there's always the negatives that are like, um, then how do you measure everybody? How, do, how is there an equal measuring line for everybody around the country? So I just think it's a very complicated issue. That obviously standardized, test, standardized testing cannot measure uh, all qualities and all capabilities, especially because people are so different. I, and I think that's one of the big issues that society has not learned to um, manage, which is that there's so many different types of learners and there's so many ways to show it, like there's kinesthetic. Um, and visual and auditory and um, for some people standardized testing that is the best way to test them and they, they succeed and they do really well and for them it works out but it's really hard to find a way to to manage um, testing and getting a good accurate show of how how well how smart how functional different types of learners are um, and I think that that's the challenge, that that's the future challenge, if there's a way, and that's why I think it's, it would be good to have options. How smart the person is doesn't always show in their grades on a standardized test. And I don't think, and I think that's for a lot of people too, even without learning disabilities, and I just don't think it's a, a very valid way to test every, like a lot of people can show how smart they are through the standardized test, but there are a lot of people that can't. Well, we can't eliminate standardized testing. It's kind of integral to the system. Um, and that while private schools might function differently, the entire function of the public school system is not to really to generate educated indivi individuals, it's to generate educated individuals that can function within society's confines. Which means that, and in society functions with tedious deadlines, society functions on these 
stupid rules. It functions on these deadlines and this pointless memorization of facts and figures. And that without something to test one's ability to do that, we're not actively preparing them for honestly what society is really like and not the ideal or the you know, platonic version of society that we all aspire to be part of, we all aspire to be part of, we all aspire to be part of. <laughs>